It seems like everyone knows and loves the British royal family. We follow their fashion choices, charitable causes, and of course, we get excited when they welcome a new member to the family. But although we know Meghan Markle loves Givenchy, sometimes we get a little bit confused about the strict rules of the succession to the throne. Today we're going to talk about who's in line for the throne and which royal family members will never end up with the crown. We'll also reveal what royal family members really think about their chances of taking the throne. It's no secret that the royal family is basically drowning in tradition, and they have a rule for just about everything. Seriously, they have guidelines for everything, from what color nail polish to wear when it's proper to don a tiara, and of course, the throne is much more serious issue than neutral nails. But you might be surprised how recently the rules regarding it changed. Now that Meghan and Harry have welcomed little Archie Harrison Mountbatten Windsor to the royal family, let's check out where he falls in the line for the throne. For much of history, there was always a preference regarding male heirs. Basically, when a boy was born, he was given precedence over any of the sisters that he might have. For example, Queen Elizabeth has four children, the eldest being her son, Prince Charles. Next, Princess Anne. She was born making her second in line for the throne behind her brother Charles. But when her younger brother, Prince Andrew, was born, he was given preference over Anne in line of the succession. So while Charles retained the number one spot, Andrew was now second in line and Anne was third. She was then made fourth in line after the birth of her third brother, Prince Edward. This feels pretty unfair, right? Good news is, that rule changed not too long ago. In 2013, the Succession to the Crown Act passed, which changed the laws of succession to the British throne. It meant that male heirs no longer get preference over female ones. Seriously, this should have been done a long time ago, but at least it's done. Unfortunately, the act was not retroactive, meaning Princess Anne and other women in the royal family didn't get bumped up any place in the line. That's right, Anne still got the short end of this stick. However, it did change things going forward. When Princess Charlotte was born, this placed her in line behind her older brother, Prince George. But when her little brother, Prince Louis, was born, Charlotte got to keep her spot in line of succession. Does that make sense? So now that we're all caught up, let's take a look at the current lineup and find out where the child of Meghan Markle and Prince Harry will fall. We all know Queen Elizabeth is the reigning monarch and her eldest son, Prince Charles, is the heir apparent. This means that no matter what new members of the royal family might pop up, he's entitled to the crown following the passing or abdication of the queen. The only way Prince Charles wouldn't get the crown would be if he declined it, and we don't ever see that happening. He's been preparing for the throne his whole life, and since his mother is the longest reigning female monarch, he's been waiting quite a long time. Prince Charles and his late wife, Princess Diana, had two children, Prince William the eldest and Prince Harry the youngest. When they were born, they took precedence over the other aunts and uncles, meaning Prince William became second in line and Harry third. Prince William is still second following his father and now his children, having precedence over their Uncle Harry, behind William and Prince George, Princess Charlotte, and Prince Louis in that order. Is anyone else totally lost? Well, let's do a quick recap. Prince Charles is next in line for the throne and he's followed by Prince William, Prince George, Princess Charlotte, Prince Louis, and Prince Harry. If Prince William and Kate Middleton ever have another child, it will also come before Prince Harry in line of succession. Okay, let's move on. As you can probably guess, the child of Prince Harry is behind his father in line for the throne. This means that he's seventh in line for the throne. When it comes to taking the throne, you have to be a biological member of the royal family in order to rule. This means you won't ever see Kate Middleton or Meghan Markle taking the thrones themselves, which feels a little unfair, but rules are rules. Do you think these duchesses should have a chance for the crown too? Now let's take a moment to talk about royal titles. Per the royal rules, only the eldest child of the eldest child is automatically prince or princess. This means Prince George was always going to be prince, but Princess Charlotte and Prince Louis titles were up in the air. But let's not forget that the queen can change things when she wants to. Sometimes it's good to be queen. She decreed that all of William and Kate's children would be granted the title title of prince or princess, regardless of what order they were born. Wait, who else got lost again? Now we're wondering what's the title for the latest member of the royal family. Even though his father is a prince, doesn't that make him one? Queen Elizabeth granted Prince Harry a dukedom when he married Meghan Markle, and that will likely affect the little one's title. We know Harry and Meghan are the Duke and Duchess of Sussex, so that would make their son Earl of Dumbarton. However, Meghan and Harry have decided not to use a courtesy title at this time, so instead of being an Earl 
Earl or a Lord, he's simply Master Archie Mountbatten Windsor. This definitely seems in keeping with Meghan and Harry's statements that they want him to have as normal a life as possible. Of course, the Queen could always step in and declare him a prince anyway, like she did with the children of Prince George and Kate Middleton. But she issued that decree months before Prince George was born, so it seems like that might not happen for the latest royal. But that doesn't mean his great-grandmother is playing favorites. Being a real-life prince or princess isn't like being in a Disney movie. There are no singing animals or fairy godmothers, which, let's face it, is seriously disappointing. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have publicly stated that they want their child to have as normal life as possible. And it's not like any of his subsequent siblings will be princes or princesses, making him the odd one out. Plus, being seventh in the line means it's incredibly unlikely he will ever take the throne. The only way that would ever happen would be if his cousins never have any children of their own and he outlives them all, plus his father and uncle. We don't like to say never, but let's be realistic. It's safe to say he's never going to actually become king. But don't start feeling bad for this new royal family member. Again, we totally blame Disney for convincing us that being king or queen is the best thing ever. Let's just say the actual members of a royal family aren't exactly sending out poison apples to secure their spots in line. Simba may have sung out how he couldn't wait to be king, but according to Prince Harry, that's not very realistic. We mean the wanting to be king part, not the singing lion part because that's definitely 100% real life. According to Prince Harry, he wouldn't ever want to be king and doesn't believe his family members want to be either. Of course, they do have the option of abdicating the throne, but Prince Harry says he can't see anyone actually turning it down. While they may not want to be confined by the power and duties that the title entails, they consider it their duty as royal family members to serve. Other than outright turning down the throne, there are always ways to become disqualified from taking it. Just because Prince Harry's son is seventh in line now doesn't mean that that's always going to be the case. Depending on the choices he makes as an adult, he could be entirely out of the running. Yes, there are other requirements outside of birth order that must be satisfied in order to be crowned king or queen, and they must be done by the person in question. For example, if Prince Harry got himself disqualified somehow, it wouldn't automatically disqualify his son. Instead, his son would take Harry's place in line, and only heirs of the body are considered viable options for the throne. Any children who are adopted or born out of wedlock are not eligible. Even if the child's parents subsequently marry another after they're born, they still cannot inherit the crown. They are not kidding around with this bloodline thing. So how could Prince Harry or any other member of the royal family lose their place in line after the fact? Perhaps unsurprisingly, the rules are stricter the closer you are in line for the crown. The first six heirs must must receive permission from the reigning monarch to marry. Yes, this does mean that Prince Harry had to get a sign-off from his grandmother before he was allowed to propose to Meghan Markle. If the Queen said no and Harry married her anyway, he would forfeit his right to the crown. But thankfully, it didn't have to come to that. There have been cases where people were forced to abdicate their claims due to marrying a commoner or, gasp, a divorce. Times have changed since then, but maybe not as recently as you might think. King Edward VIII ascended the throne in 1936 after the passing of his father, but ended up voluntarily abdicating. The reason? Love, of course. He was determined to marry an American socialite, Wallace Sampson, but her divorce was considered a huge strike against her. The British Prime Minister, Stanley Baldwin, declared marrying a divorcee was out of the question, but Edward refused to back down. He willingly gave up being king in order to marry, making his younger brother, George VI, officially King George VI. Prince Harry was also determined to marry an American divorcee, just like his great-great uncle. That's not the only family member he takes after, apparently. King George V very famously didn't want to take the throne either, and he was very reluctant to step up. However, his sense of duty and honor left him with no other choice. He ended up marrying his childhood friend, Lady Elizabeth Bowes Lyon, whose non-royal birth had gossipers going crazy. It was considered a seriously modern move at the time. These days, not so serious. There was even a time when marrying a Roman Catholic was enough to disqualify someone from the throne. However, this was also altered as part of the Succession to the Crown Act of 2013. It got rid of this ban so royal family members can marry people of any faith they choose. But this doesn't mean that they have religious freedom to themselves. One of the lesser known facts about British royalty is that the reigning monarch is also the supreme governor of the Church of England. And the Church of England is an Anglican church, so naturally it's expected that the monarch will be of the same faith. Choosing a different set of beliefs makes someone ineligible for the throne.
With all of these strict rules, you might be wondering how Queen Elizabeth ever made it to the throne. And you're not alone. Because when Elizabeth was born, almost nobody imagined she would even be a serious contender for the throne. Prior to her father taking the throne, everyone thought her uncle Edward would become king and have children to succeed him. When he took the throne, she was third in line after her father. But after her abdication, she became second in line behind her father, while her younger sister, Princess Margaret, was third. If Elizabeth had a brother, he would have taken her place in line, but as we all know, that didn't happen. Maybe that's why she was all too happy to change the rules favoring male heirs. It's pretty crazy to think about that since she's the longest reigning British monarch. Now, if anyone is still totally lost, sound off in the comments below. The child of the Duke and Duchess of Sussex has been welcomed into the family with a ton of rules, but also a ton of history. He'll have no shortage of privilege, but will likely never be a serious contender for the throne. But then again, that's what people thought about Queen Elizabeth when she was just a little princess. But right now, he'll have to content himself with being the seventh in line behind his grandfather, uncle, father, and cousins. What do you think about the rules of the succession of the British royal family? Do you think they're too strict, or do they sound just about right? Share your thoughts with us in the comment section, and then click on the subscribe button for more videos from us here at the Taco. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you again next time.